Hello and welcome to our um, newest artist talk from the Mass Exhibition with Inclusive Arts Vermont. My name is Heidi Swevens um, and I'm the Director of Community Partnerships with Inclusive Arts Vermont. And one of the things I get to do is work with the exhibitions programs and the artists and I'm thrilled to do that. Um, I'm gonna do a brief introduction. I use she, they pronouns. Um, for access purposes, I'll do a visual description. I have blue eyes and pale skin with short brown hair. And today I'm wearing a turquoise knit shirt with a black tank top underneath. Behind me is an abstract rectangular painting against a white wall with swirly colors of red and blue and yellows. Um, and uh, the mass exhibition is a visual arts exhibition um, presented by Inclusive Arts Vermont that's traveling the state. It features 22 Vermont artists with disabilities. And the artist tonight, today, um, Callie Kaufman, is one of those artists. Um, currently, the exhibition is at the St. Johnsbury Athenaeum. And you can find more information about Masked and Inclusive Arts Vermont um, on our website, which is www.inclusiveartsvermont.org. And that's all spelled out. So www.inclusiveartsvermont, period, O-R-G. And I'm thrilled to be here with um, artist Callie Kaufman. So Callie, please introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, I am Callie Kaufman. I go by she, her pronouns. I have curly black hair, very big glasses, and I have a white shirt with lemons on them. And behind me is a few boxes because I'm in the process of moving. <laughs> Great. Well, welcome. We're so glad um, that you're with us today. And we have lots we want to talk about. Um, I wonder if you want to start with the piece, uh, your piece that's in the mass exhibition, uh, to bring that up and show the audience that piece and have um, our colleague Kat Redness do a description. Great. Hi, everyone. I am the voice from beyond. This is Kat. <laughs> Um, and I'm so happy to be here with Heidi and Callie today. This is Callie's piece that is in the mass exhibition. It is called Me and My Dog. It is a line drawing, black ink on white paper. The, uh, the drawing is of a uh, person, I would say a young person and their dog in this. The dog is a shaggy sheep dog type of dog. Um, both of them are kind of, their feet both have these circular feet standing about the same distance. The young person's hand is on the dog's head and um, above them, it says me and my dog in print in all capital letters. It's framed by a black outline. And one of the most unique pieces, a piece that we really appreciate about this, we appreciate this piece so much but one of the pieces that we really appreciate is both the dog owner and the dog have bangs that are these curved kind of u-shaped bangs that cover their eyes so their eyes are not visible um their bangs are going over right to the top of their nose and both of them are smiling gently thank you thank you so callie do you have anything to add to that description about the, the piece, and we'll, I'll ask you about the stories in, in just a moment. But anything to add to that description? The description is very spot on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Great. Great. I always like to ask the artists if there's any details that um, we might have missed since when the artist is, uh, is present. So, um, and I know from talking with you before that there are some stories. So tell us a little bit about the story behind this particular piece of art. Um, I've recently been doing a lot of uh, cards that have dogs on them, and the story is that at first, before I started drawing things other than humans, I would only want to draw people because I did not think that I could draw dogs, and I was very extremely stubborn about it. <laughs> People would be like, oh, you should do dogs because there's this dog festival coming up. And I just was like, I can't do dogs. <laughs> and I'd said no, and I'd say no, and I'd say no. And then I went on a vacation from school. Mm -hmm. And day two, I was like, I'm going crazy. I need to draw something. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided to give dogs a try. And 
when I did it and I realized I could do it, I couldn't stop making dog cards. So I had quite a few dog cards to be able to sell at that festival and mm. they sold out and I was so surprised. I was very extremely surprised that my dogs were good enough to sell. <laughs> <laughs> people loved them they uh were like oh these are so cool you you must have you must love drawing dogs and i'm like this is new i do love it but i haven't done it before <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um cat i don't know if you mind showing um callie instead of the card at this point when you get a chance um so when was um when did you make me and my dog so how long ago have you how long ago was that um, I started my greeting cards business right after the pandemic hit, mm. uh, and a year later, after working with that business, I was offered by my school to attend a dog festival because mm -hmm. they make dog treats and they employ people with disabilities to help make them. So they mm -hmm. were having this dog festival to like get dogs in, promote local business and promote their dog treats. And they were like, oh, you should make a dog one. And me and my dog was actually the first one I made. Mm -hmm. And I was so close to many times restarting me and my dog because I thought that a mistake wasn't good enough. The bangs that are so like well known for that picture I did that on accident, but I saw <laughs> it and I'm like, hey, me and my mom always say that sometimes dogs actually look like their owners. So I thought, mm -hmm. let's use that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that you were saying, um, you know, that it was, it was a mistake at first. You know, sometimes we talk about happy accidents, you know, those things that weren't intended, but end up being uh, really beautiful and meaningful yeah. um so yeah all my and, cards are happy accidents <laughs> <laughs> everything i draw I, art has been extremely therapeutic to me it's taught me that like mistakes are actually beginnings for different stories if mm. if i had to point to one drawing i didn't make a mistake in, i wouldn't have any drawings to point at <laughs> but uh -huh. there. I guess they're not mistakes. They are like little surprises and like little ways to just change how you draw. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving listening to you. Um, Thank you. Can we go back to the bangs for just a moment? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I mean, we have other art to show and I have you know, some more questions. We're going to go back and forth, you know, as a conversation. Um, but the, the masked theme is sort of... Um, well, it's put out to artists, open call, you know, open ended, um, with some prompts of kind of what what keeps hidden or um, what's veiled. And so sometimes I, you know, the those bangs. I'm putting my hands over my face now and peeking through my fingers. Um, we're kind of masking something about you know the people, the person, and the dog. And I think that's one of the things that stood out in terms of the selection process. But I've had the privilege of being with the actual art and having people um, see me and my dog. And there's such an endearing quality around that and, and people love the banks. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you heard that. Thank um, you. Yeah, and yeah, it, and there was one story where there was a, a group of students, um, high school students, so um, similar to your age, um, who were there with a teacher and the teacher said, oh, that's me and my dog. And one of the students, because the dog goes to the school said, no, it's us and our dog. <laughs> and, you know, so people can connect, you know, through that image um, to their own stories. And it's just, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how long, you said you started making art in the pandemic. And um, I'm curious what, I know you do cartoon drawings and drawings. What other mediums, if any, do you use? Tell us a little bit about your art process. When I was, I started drawing when I was actually two years old a lot. And it was like a social thing for me because I wasn't very socially adapted at that time for quite a while. So I didn't have like any fun friends to play with at that time. And something mm -hmm. that like kids would come up to me and start talking with me about 
would be the stuff that I drew. So drawing mm -hmm. was kind of a way to like get other people my age to come near and actually get to know me. And what was the question? I just went off. Oh, no, no um, it was wide open. So you, um, you know, you responded to wide open. Just tell us about your art process. And I think I misheard you because I thought you started art in the pandemic, but you started your business in the pandemic. Yeah. And we'll I, get more to So you started drawing at two. I started drawing at two. Yeah. But the pandemic, I was like all alone. It was really really hard to see my friends and so mm -hmm. i would send out cards that i made to make sure that they were okay and that they were handling it well and mm -hmm. they were like oh i'm so glad that i got a card like no one does that anymore and i was mm -hmm. like no one does that anymore i could maybe make a business out of this and mm -hmm. it was like are you sure you want to make a business when all other business are shutting down and going out. I'm like, yeah, I think I can do this with a little help. So I started working at a Mercy Marketplace through Mercy Connections. Mm -hmm. And I do cartoons for that. Really back in the day, I, I draw through different mediums. I used to do like anime looking drawings, mm -hmm. always cartoonish. And then I formed my own style through different art forms. Like I definitely owe a lot of my art form to the peanuts, like mm. Charlie Brown, like the head shape and all of that. Uh huh. I definitely owe part of my drawing to the peanuts gallery kind of drawings, but mm. I've kind of made it a little bit my own, mm -hmm. which is I think a reason why they sell because they are a little bit original and they do tie in different arts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've been drawing for a long time, you know, yeah. um, and I, I want to go back to what you said about it, drawings was a way for you to engage with um, children your age, that there was something for you to talk about in the drawing. Yeah. And I think that, you know, if, if you want to say more about that, wonderful. Um, I'm interested if you want to say more. But I also think that one of the, you know, the beautiful things about art um, can be the connections that it makes, you know, so to hear you say as a young person that your art was a way for you to make connections um, just kind of echoes that for me. And it might be my own belief and not necessarily anything that's true, but um, I heard I heard that from you. So I'm not sure if you want to say more about how your art and drawings connected you with people maybe early on and, you know, throughout the time. How yeah. has art made connections for you? Yeah. Very early on, uh, I was in the special eds room. Uh, mm -hmm. at my first school from kindergarten to second grade. Mm -hmm. And I think other kids would hear about that and think that it would be harder to connect with me. So mm -hmm. sometimes they just didn't try. And I pushed myself through art to show, I can do this, I can also communicate and I can do all these things that you can do. And them seeing my art, they would come over at lunchtime and be like, hey, that's really, really cool. And like, that would be a way for me to make friends. Like them just approaching me was the first step to being more social and art kind of helped um, them do that for me. Mm -hmm. Now I have lots of friends. I have, who all know that I have a little bit of strengths that I can talk and just do what anyone else can do. And it also, really helps calm me down at the same time. If I did not draw at all during the pandemic, I'd be a lot more uh, wired and in anxious than I am now. Uh, I got a lot of, I asked for a lot of art stuff for the whole Christmas because I knew I would be needing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Um, you know, you mentioned, um, and I might not get this exactly the way you said it, so. If if it doesn't feel right, please correct me. Um, but that through art and, and people coming to connect with you, they could say that you had strengths. And um, I know for me that living with a disability, sometimes it's really hard for me to know I have my own strengths because there's lots of messages that tell me differently. 
but also um, that there's lots of things I can do and I do well um, and I enjoy. And so I think, you know, I'm hearing that art was a way for you to, and again, I'm checking this out with you, I'm not trying to tell you, but to um, express yourself and who you are and make connections and then your strengths, you know, just kind of shown through some of that. Yeah, art showed me, and it probably shows a ton of other people that I had something to offer, like not just the school or friendships, but the world. And for a while, you know, sometimes you're told like to be original and sometimes mm -hmm. you're told to not be original. And I think I chose original. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing I good. Few, okay, I have a few more questions. Is that okay? Yeah, um, definitely. My, and, my cat is running over my feet, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I ask you about your cat? What's your cat's name? My cat's name is Mouse. A lot uh -huh. of people, yeah, laugh at that. And a lot of people assume that I have a dog because of my drawings. And I'm actually allergic to dogs, mm. but I love drawing them. Uh -huh. that's as close as sometimes I'll usually get to them and I also love drawing them because people will bring me their dogs and say can you draw them and I get to hang out with the dogs for as long as my allergies allow and then I get to draw them spend some time with the dogs I do love <laughs> dogs <laughs> yeah it sounds like you might love animals is that accurate yeah yeah yes <laughs> very <laughs> much so <laughs> I have a couple cats here. Um, sometimes they make a cameo on Zoom, but I'm hoping they stay away. But if they do, we'll just have one of my cats meet your mouse. Something yeah. Right behind me. Would you like to yeah. see her? Sure. Okay. Do you mind describing what she looks like? Uh, she, You're sharing this with has, the, the community. She has the pattern of a Holstein cow. She is uh -huh. white with black spots. Uh -huh. And she has what we call an eye patch because. Mm -hmm. This part of her face is black. It's a black spot. Hey! Hey, beautiful! Uh oh. Hello, Mouse. Thanks for waking up for a minute. And what a great description, Callie. Yeah, thanks for that introduction. So, so now I'm going to ask for a couple questions about, like, you do people in your um, art, and then you do animals. What other kinds of content or other topics do you cover in your art? Uh, I have some of my uh, <laughs> art here. Um, I try to make all of my art very expressional and make people mm -hmm. feel something. Mm -hmm. I try to tell a story with my art. Yeah. Uh, my story in 2020, when everything was happening, I had to go back to like some of the really good times, like right before the pandemic, we had a lovely winter. I had a winter collection that mm. thankfully sold a lot. Yeah. And so you had the winter collection. So you were doing seasons or nature or? I was trying to remember the last season I had before COVID started. Uh -huh. and that was okay. the winter season. And yeah. like, it was kind of a reminder for anyone who bought it or got it. Yeah. Remember last winter when we could all be together, there was no such thing as COVID. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to bring that back. And I've had people who got in it and who have bought them saying that it really kind of brought them back to nostalgia and made them remember how things used to be. Yeah. Well, Kelly, I'm feeling such heart and connection in um, what you're describing. What I'm hearing that your art um, brings you, you said before, a place of calm and connection and good memories, you know, positive memories, um, and that also connecting with people. And that it sounds like you want to have, like that your art brings some of that out in the connections with others and that you're hearing that from people who buy your cards. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm feeling it in my heart. I'm putting my hand on my heart and just, you know, I don't know if I have words for it, but I, I feel that. So thank you for, for that part of your creative process, You're um, sharing that. Um, 
we have some examples, um, some more examples to show of your art. But before we do that, can I ask you uh, if you have any stories about what inspires you or, you know, how is it that you, what's a, you know, day in the life of Kelly, the artist, like, how do you find inspiration and um, do you have anything that's routine? Uh, I recently graduated, so I'm going to have to go back to before I graduated. But uh -huh. my school is filled with so many inspiring people with so many inspiring stories and so many uh -huh. inspiring dogs that we have there. <laughs> <laughs> so I usually just go to school and by the time I come home or sometimes I'll even whip out my sketchbook there. Uh, mm -hmm. They're just so inspiring and like I never ever have left that school not inspired by somebody. Uh, yeah. Some of the ca cards that I make are actually made because of them and for them and uh, yeah so some of them yeah. if we look at them I'll tell you who they're for. <laughs> All right, so I think that's a perfect cue for, for time to look at the other pieces of art that you wanted to share. Um, and yeah, and I know that Kat will be hearing that and here we go, yeah. Uh, oh. So this right. is, um, yeah, Kelly, so this is a quick one. Um, and is this one you want to talk about or you want me to keep going to find another sure, I one? I can talk about this. Great. So this is Live, Laugh, Love. And this is, again, a line drawing. And at the center is a person with their arms outstretched. They're wearing cargo pants and a t-shirt. They have a triangle necklace. They have kind of shaggy black hair with glasses. And they're wearing a bucket hat, shoes, and socks. And they have a bracelet on their left arm. Go ahead. You, you, you now chat away. <laughs> okay. Uh, my school is extremely outdoorsy and we like going on hikes. We like seeing nature and we like living in nature. A lot of these have to do with my school because that's where I get all of my yeah. uh, inspiration. <laughs> yeah. But we try to live, we try to laugh, and we try to love at my school. We yeah. just take the outdoors. So... I also used to be quite outdoorsy when I was very little, very big backyard with into the woods. And I would just, either I was drawing or I was running off into the woods. That was my <laughs> childhood. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for that. Do you want to show a couple more? Sure. Okay. And do you know the names of the ones you want to show, Callie? Oh, there's one called Awesome Team that is... My second favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. favorites are great. <laughs> this is awesome team. And this this almost feels like it could be connected to me and my dog. So this is, um, this is again, a line drawing, black on white paper. Um, at the top, it says awesome team. And then there is a person standing that looks like, Kelly, am I right in saying this is uh, maybe a fire person's uniform? Yeah. So yeah. this is somebody who's a firefighter. Uh, they have their hat off, but you can, there's, they're wearing a jacket and pants that look like a set, maybe with the reflective gear from a fire uh, person's uniform. And next to them, sitting kind of right beside their leg, is a Dalmatian dog, a spotted pup, um, who's sitting with a collar around. And the dog is looking right, straight forward. And the person is kind of looking slightly down towards the dog or off towards the side. Um, and this is awesome team. Thank you. I have a little joke that the dog is breaking the fourth wall looking right at the uh, person holding the card. <laughs> um, one of my school friends graduated and became a firefighter. And mm. this one is dedicated to them because uh, not everyone wants to be someone who saves lives and put their lives in danger. And he really liked dogs. Uh, so I put those two together. It was also a little thank you to firefighters and EMTs and police. Yeah. Wow. I, I love how um, Kat's doing the description and then you're telling a story. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Um, 
Anything else about this one, Kelly? Uh, no, not exactly. I remember something funny though. I had to really look up what a fire person's outfit would be. Uh huh. <laughs> because I wanted to do it right, and I saw the reflectors, and I'm like, oh, you know, sometimes people go the extra mile and color in my cards. Mm. Like little reflector spots when I colored in this card because sometimes I color in my own cards I put little green reflector spots and I thought it looked pretty cool oh yeah I love that I mean two things I love that you're sharing that you research you know like I know lots of people um kind of go down the internet wonderlands of you know finding out information and so you did that recognizing you didn't know much about firefighters outfits um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I honestly, I wouldn't either necessarily. So reflectors, I'm making a mental note just in case that ever comes up. Um, but that also because of the, your style of art, um, I love the idea that sometimes people want to color them in and sometimes you color them in. Um, yeah. Yeah. How did that idea happen? I'm curious if you know. When I was describing my art, I described it as colorless. And someone I was uh, working alongside with through Mercy Connections and Mercy Marketplaces, like, oh, when you describe it like that, it sounds like people can color it in. I'm like, should I pretend that I knew this and like say, yeah, that's why I did it? And I'm like, nope, I didn't see that. That's very smart of you. And <laughs> maybe in the future when I sell cards, I'll sell a pack of crayons for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kelly, I love it. you were talking before about maybe you know, like everything is a mistake or every piece of art has a mistake. And then later you're like, well, maybe it wasn't a mistake. And now you're saying, you know, just like the dialogue in the back and forth, there's almost a generativity of like just being in the moment and in the process and seeing what comes of it. Yeah, um, like I could take credit and say that I knew this all along and I'm like, nope, <laughs> uh, but thank you. <laughs> you just started something new. Yeah. Oh my God. I have this really big smile on my face. Almost my cheeks are almost hurting from smiling. I love that. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, good problem to have, I would say. Um, do you want to do one or two more of your cards? Sure. Can I show you my favorite? Please. It's the You Rule card. <laughs> um, I I actually. Oh, wait. You've just. I guess I. Sure. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kelly. Hi, it's Kat again, everyone. Kelly, I agree with Heidi. I'm smiling ear to ear hearing these stories. And so thank you for being so generous with sharing them. Um, this is You Rule, which I also adore. Um, you Rule is a line drawing with black ink on white paper. It is this, it is a figure who has kind of curly, uh, light hair around their face. They are wearing a, an elaborate floor-length robe with um, like kind of a royal robe and uh, tons of fabric that drapes down to the floor and at their neck and chest, there's almost like a fur or floofy material that's around their neck and uh, it's closed around. So th there aren't any visible arms or legs, it's covering their whole body. They have their eyes closed and a big, big smile. Um, and almost there's this little tiny mark under the eyes as if the cheeks are going up like when you smile really big. And on top of their head is, um, a, is a crown, a very traditional crown uh, with the triangles going up and down. Um, and then there are black uh, triangles in the back showing depth. So showing that the crown goes all the way around. And above that, in the printed uh, writing, it says, you rule. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, I'll draw something and I'll print it out on the cards and I'll really like it. And I'll have to steal one because I know it might sell out really fast. So I definitely did steal one of those cards just for myself. And it is the first time I ever used depth perception. <laughs> perception. <laughs> Mm. And someone who really inspired me to make this, have you ever heard of Mary Anglebright? Mm hmm Yeah. My mom is absolutely, well, I wouldn't say obsessed, but she loves the calendar so much 
that she gets one every Christmas as a gift from her sister. And this has been happening like since I was born. So I've always seen kind of Mary Anglebright stuff. And this mm-hmm. is the first time that I kind of like made something that looked a little bit Mary Anglebrightish, British. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely my favorite. I relate. Sometimes I'll get a big fluffy blanket and just wrap it around like a cape. I definitely relate to this. And it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. I Thank you for um, sharing your favorite and also kind of, you know, you mentioned uh, Charlie Brown and now um, Mary, Inglebright. Mary, I was going to say Marie and I knew that Mary Inglebright. And so, you know, another thing artists do is they sort of, well, not like I know artists, but many artists and creative people, you know, look for inspiration in the world. And there's these two different artistic styles that seem to be influencing what you're exploring and, and experimenting with. And um, I will I, I say love, love, love. Um, but I just, I'm appreciating too that you're talking about wrapping yourself in a blanket, like a, you know, like a, a robe. And um, I imagine many people in the audience can relate to that, especially in winters and, you know, in the Northeast. Sometimes you just need to wrap yourself in a blanket, and just cool <laughs> whatever you can, whether it's like a house. It doesn't have to be a castle. You don't have to have a castle to rule. You can have a house. Yeah. I rule over my cat, I feed her, give her all that <laughs> stuff. Uh, just, you probably rule over something. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna take the next time I have a blanket, I, I'm not sure that I have a crown, I could probably make one, but I could wrap myself in a br- blanket and I will imagine that crown and yeah. just that sense of, you know, it sounds like empowerment almost, you know, yeah. like confidence and um, we'll yeah. A crown to rule the rule what you have. <laughs> yeah well we're gonna um just a few more questions um and we'll you know let people know where they can find more of your art but I'm curious just you know what about the artistic process or being an artist Callie is of value to you like what do you find in being an artist I feel so happy um as an artist when I change someone's face from like maybe a frown to a smile or when I get people to giggle. I love making people giggle with my art. I feel so happy when I just found out that one of my cards is in Germany because they were sent to someone in Germany. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got out of the USA. (laughs) (laughs) We're foreign. (laughs) um so like watching it go somewhere is like i get i don't have a kid but it's kind of like watching your kid walk and then going places with my business i'm like slow down (laughs) wait up Uh, (laughs) so that's a great segue into your business tell tell us a little bit more about your business um, and uh, where people can find more of your, your art and your cards. I had signed up for a business making program, M- Mercy Marketplace, through Mercy Connections, mm-hmm. right before the pandemic hit. And one of my first like Zoom talks with them, since we did it over Zoom because of the pandemic, I was really like, Callie, are you really going to make a business during a pandemic Mm. when things are crazier than ever? Mm. And I'm like, but my idea will definitely work now. More people more than ever are sending cards and need more love. Like, it would kind of be a little bit of a disservice to myself and to people who might buy them and be happy if I didn't start the business. So I thought, sweet greets, they're greeting cards and I want you to feel sweet when you get them. And Mm. one of the descriptions I put on my cards when they were sold online was, it's sweet to give greets. Uh, Now more than ever, 
that person you've been thinking about deserves and needs a card. So please buy some of these. They are all winter themed because the last time I remember seeing people was winter. <laughs> uh -huh. And they, a lot of my teachers got some, a lot of my friends, a lot of strangers that I guess aren't strange anymore got them. And it was uh -huh. really, really awesome to have a business idea that actually would work, make people happy during this crazy time when a lot of businesses were closing their doors and a lot of people needed a card, I was able to help and make that happen. Yeah. I love, um, you know, I know email and texting and there's lots of social platforms that I don't even know the names of. They have their place and they're important and they're fast. But I think for me, I love to send cards and to receive cards. Um, there's just something different about holding it in your hands and putting it on the fridge or the wall. Yeah. yeah. So um, maybe we can invite Kat back on to show the Instagram account that you have. And um, so for people who want to follow you on Instagram. Awesome. Hello, I am getting us to Instagram. Hold on one sec. Perfect. Okay, so this is Callie's Instagram. So we'll also have this in the um, comments when this goes live. We'll also have this in the description. But this is Callie's Instagram, and it is at Callie's, C-A-L-L-I-E, Sweet Greets, S-W-E-E-T-G-R-E-E-T-S, at Instagram. And so at Callie's Sweet Greets at Instagram. And what we're looking at right now is we're looking at, this is the desktop version of it, um, Callie Kaufman. My name is Callie Kaufman and my greeting card business, Sweet Greets, is growing. Let's grow together because it is sweet to give greets, which is so true. <laughs> um, and Callie's profile picture is the you rule picture. And then there's just some amazing examples of um, pieces. So I see there's a graduation one. I, I wonder if that was done very recently. Uh, yes. One about maple syrup and Black Lives Matter and uh, different causes, you know, talking about strays and animals working, treating yourself. So they all have Callie's unique and distinctive style of the line drawings, where we see a little bit of those ref references to maybe Peanuts or Mary Engelbright. Um, but we also are seeing Callie's unique style and how she's interpreted that for herself. And so these are little slices of life. And um, some of the ones here that I'm showing at the bottom here um, are some of Kelly's artwork that we're seeing. There's an experimentation also with adding typed text and banner text in that as well. And then also uh, some shirts um, that have Kelly's artwork on it, me and my dog on it, and a very meta one here, which I'm going to call up. This is it says love what you wear and it is a character wearing the shirt that says me and my dog and so it has then a drawing of me and my dog on the shirt in a drawing and so uh this is Callie's Instagram where you can see all this amazing artwork that she's creating and follow her and her business um and so that's Callie's sweet greets at Instagram well, thank you thank you thank you of course. And Kelly, we're, we're winding down. So just one last question, actually two. Is there anything else that you want people to know um, about you and your art? That we I, yeah. I want people to send cards, definitely. I want people to, maybe if it's, really raining or really snowing, like leave your house, go to your mailbox, because there might be an, a, a card in there for you that will make you extra dextra happy. <laughs> I know that there's a few times when I would just trench through the snow right up to my mailbox just to check for cards, because they make you happy. And I hope people are sending lots of cards. Sometimes I'm like, it doesn't even have to be my cards. 
just please send something to someone. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you want people to stay connected. Yeah, yeah. preferably my cards, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you rule. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can't, that's okay. <laughs> Well, Kelly, this has been so wonderful to, to get to know you more and to um, see more of your art and your cartoons. And um, before we wind down, is there anything else, um, not just about your, your art, but anything else that you um, that we didn't touch on that you want to share before we say goodbye? I think we got through a lot of everything. Yeah, <laughs> that we did. All right. Well, thank you again. And thanks everyone for joining us. Um, this is Callie Kaufman. Her piece, Me and My Dog, is in the Mast Exhibition. And um, thank you again, Callie, for your time and care and smiles and um, giggle prompts. Thank you <laughs> for having me. Yeah. <laughs>